Hi, I'm Stephen Paul, and welcome to the Land of Israel, God's Story. This is going to be an extraordinary adventure we go on with Academy Award winner John Boyd, who's going to tell the greatest stories of the Bible. Swings around, and then he, and then he lets it go. We're going to go off-road with a great tour guide, Aaron Schaefer. That entire compound is called the Temple Mount. Under that massive platform is the peak of Mount Moriah. And two extraordinary rabbis, Simon and Levy Jr. The awareness how one man set out to change the entire world from right here. This is going to be an extraordinary adventure. We're in the land of miracles. Israel, welcome to it. And let's go. Welcome to the land of Israel, God's story. So we're on this crazy adventure, and you would think like we would be in one of these great historical places where you'd see the security guards standing by and all the tour guides and buses. No, we're what you call off-road. We're with the guy who knows the sort of secrets of the Bible, the places where really most people don't know. Follow us for this extraordinary tale and adventure. What is this place? You see, John, this place, um, it's all paved now. It used to be a dirt road. I don't know what happened here. Someone put here a big pile of uh, dirt, I guess, building the road. And every time I come here, I'm wondering if it's still gonna be here. You don't know what it is yet, but this is one of the most important biblical sites. It's right up here. I'm really sorry I have to climb over like this through the mud. Watch your step, John. What do you think of an old man? You're right, I'm, I forgot I am. I hope it's still here. Remember I said we're off road and we're going into like these really secret places? A dumpster? There's wires here, there's dirt. There's mud here, guys. And we're climbing. Jump over that, just avoid it. Here you go. Good, good, good. See, oh, okay. You okay? And even though in theory, this site is uh, protected. Uh, you're going to see that some years ago they almost bulldozed it and just by chance a hiker or someone told them you can't be bulldozing here. And because of that, it's still here. Who knows if it, if it will be here in a year from now or two years from now. And who knows if it's even here now. This is going to be a challenge to get down here. Let me find you the best route down so that nobody breaks any bones. We can get down this here. This whole pile of dirt is new. We can do it. Here we can do it. Look. Look. Now they piled all this dirt up here. Look. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Dig in your heels. Dig in your heels. I made it. <laughs> Look at these beautiful flowers here. Yeah, it really is. Okay. Guys, come. Put the chairs here. Let's line them up like this. One, two, three, four. How many do we have? Four or five? Great. Let's line them up. Facing this way. Away from the tree. John, come have a seat. Gentlemen. Take our chairs. The first thing I want to say is about the chairs. It, there was a great movie called The Twelve Chairs by Mel Brooks. And it was all about these chairs all throughout, I think, Russia. And... <clears throat> We needed some, I call them director's chairs because they're tall chairs. And we, is, and we, and we were going to bring them with us to Israel, but we couldn't find the chairs. So we got the chairmen, the two, these two guys that, oh, they come in and take a look. These are the, come, come in, boys. These are, these are the chairmen, the chairmen, these two. They went all throughout Israel to get the director's chairs. And we have found our director's chairs, and they are so important because... As you can see, this is our set. So we bring the chairs with us wherever we are. That's all I wanted to tell you. Please, <laughs> thank you, boys. I understand that <laughs> at the end leave. of our filming, th these are going to be on permanent display at the Israel National Museum. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys done with your joking already? Joking? What joking? This is serious stuff. This is unbelievable. 
when we're done here, when we are done here, your mind is going to be blown. All of your minds are going to be blown. I think that you're going to agree with me that this site is one of the top two or three things that we did. Of all the epic biblical places that we went to on this journey of yours in Israel, you're going to step away and you're going to say, how did I not know about this place? How did I not know? You know, like Jacob said, how did I sleep in this place and God is here and I didn't know? You're going to say the same thing. How did I come to Israel so many times that I didn't know that this exists? So let me set it up for you and let me explain to you where we are. Let me take off my backpack, guys. In the book of Judges, you have the story of Samson, one of the most famous people in the Bible. Samson, the strong man who had the long hair, uh, who fought the Philistines, who lived with Delilah, and ended up dying in the temple of the Philistines. That story happened here. Samson was born in this place. And with that said, we'll be right back. And welcome back to the land of Israel, God's story. Samson was born in this place. How do we know that Samson was born in this place? If you open up the book of Judges, where it speaks about Samson, you will see that it says, a man from Tzorah, whose name was Manoach, his wife had an angel speak to her. What is Tzorah? Where is Tzorah in the land of Israel? Tzorah is on that mountain that we're looking at. The mountain that we're looking at in front of us with all the trees and everything, that is ancient Tzorah. How do I know that that's ancient Tzorah? Because until 1948, there was an Arab village there called Sara. Okay? The village retained the name of the biblical site of Tzorah. Now we are in the land of the biblical tribe of Dan. If we would walk on the other side of the valley over there, we're in the tribe of Judah, the land of the tribe of Judah. This is the land of the tribe of Dan. Dan had the smallest inheritance of all the tribes, very small inheritance. And the Philistines controlled most of their inheritance and they never succeeded in actually conquering most of their land. And so because of that, they were squeezed into just two hilltops, really. One called Sora here and one called Eshtaol on the next hilltop over there. Samson's parents were from Tzorah, that's right behind us. Now, as you read this story, the woman is out in the field one time and an angel appears to her. Until then, she wasn't able to have children. She was barren. And the angel comes to her and says, you are going to have a baby, but you need to know he's going to be special. He's going to be a Nazarite from, the, from his birth. And therefore, already now while you're pregnant with him, you shouldn't drink wine. You shouldn't touch anything contaminated. You should act like the way a Nazarite acts so that while he's developing in your womb, he will develop as a Nazarite. And the moment that he's born, he will be protected in this way that he can never cut his hair for his entire life. He can never eat grapes or drink wine or eat raisins or anything that comes from the grapevine for all of his life because he's going to be dedicated as a Nazarite to God. Now this woman goes back from the field and she tells her husband. And her husband is in disbelief. He says to himself, I guess, probably, women, you know, in those days, people were chauvinist. Who knows if she really knows what she's talking about? Maybe she heard something. Maybe she, you know, maybe she's hallucinating. I don't know. So he says, he turns to God and he says, God, please, if what my wife is telling me is true, send the angel to me. I want to hear it myself. <laughs> So Manoach turns to God and he prays. He says, God, if what my wife said is true, please send the angel to me. I want to hear it first person. I don't want to hear the rumor. So his wife goes back down into the field and the angel comes to her again. Notice the angel doesn't come to her husband. The angel comes to her. In other words, God answers Manoach's prayer by sending the angel to his wife and she has to go get the husband and bring the husband back to her. In other words, God is standing up for this woman. He's basically saying, uh, you want to hear it first person? You're, you still have to hear it through your wife. I'll let you hear it first person, but your wife is going to have to bring you. So she goes back up to the city and she brings her husband and her husband's following her down into the field. And there is the angel. And the angel is described as a man, as an angel. So it's not clear to them if he's some sort of a prophet or a holy man or if he's an angel. They're, they themselves 
aren't really sure. They know he's not a normal person, okay? Manoach and his wife are talking to the angel, and Manoach says to the angel, is it true what my wife says? And the angel says, everything that I told your wife is true. So Manoach says to the angel, well, what exactly am I supposed to do with this boy? What are the rules we have to follow? So the angel says, everything that I told your wife, that's what you should do. He shouldn't eat grapes. He shouldn't eat, drink wine. He shouldn't eat raisins. He shouldn't cut his hair. That's what you should do. Exactly what I told your wife. So the angel basically stands up for the wife and uh, defends her case. Manoach says to the angel, wow, this is really good news that you brought us. Really good news. I want to celebrate. I want to slaughter an animal on your behalf and make a festival. And in those days when you made a festival, you would sacrifice part of the animal to God and then you would eat the rest. That was how it was done. The first part would go to God and then you would eat the rest. So he said, let me slaughter an animal and sacrifice it. But Manoach said it in an ambiguous way that the angel wasn't sure what was his intention. Maybe he, his intention was to sacrifice to God and not to feed his guests. But it also sounded like he might be saying he wants to sacrifice it to the angel himself. So the angel says, if you want to honor me by feeding me, I will not eat of your food. I don't eat your food. And if you want to sacrifice, sacrifice to God, because he's the one who is blessing you. So Menach says, okay, I'm going to sacrifice to God. And there in the field, it says there was a rock, a tzur. In Hebrew, tzur means like a piece of bedrock like this that we're standing on, but that sticks up out of the ground. It's called tzur. And Menach goes and he slaughters the animal on the tzur and he lights the fire and he starts to bring the offering. And then it says, when the fire went up from the altar, from the Mizbeach, so it calls it a tzur, a stone, but then it calls it a Mizbeach, which is very strange because every time we have an altar in the Bible, someone builds an altar. You don't offer an offering on a stone, on a piece of stone. But here, the Bible says that he offered it on the stone, and then it calls it an altar. So it has to be an altar made out of a piece of stone. So when he brings the fire on the altar, it says that God does a miracle, that the angel, so to speak, jumps into the fire and shoots up to heaven and disappears. Okay? Now, where did that happen? So let's think about it. Now, this is Samson. This is, this is the, Samson's the parents, birth, his mother yeah. and father. His Anticipating mother and father. the birth of Samson. Absolutely. So let's try and figure out where does that happen. So if the city of ancient Sorel was on that hilltop, that you guys see right in front of you. Right. Right behind the trees was the walled city of Tzora, and they lived there. Right. And the woman went running back and forth to the field. Fields are not on mountaintops. Fields are not on slopes. Fields are on low-lying areas. The field has to be somewhere down in this area, right? If you look behind you also, it's flat. It's flat all the way to Bet Shemesh. But Bet Shemesh is in the tribe of Judah. It's right. not, right. it's on the tribe of Dan. It's a different territory. Right. So you would assume that it's in the fields on the closer side of Torah, not uh, three miles this way and not three miles that way. It should be within a half a mile or something. She's running back and forth. She lives in the city and she tends a field down in the valley. So you would expect that story to have happened in this general area. Right here, yeah. In this general area. So all we have to do is find if in this area there is a piece of rock, which is also an altar. If there's a piece of rock that is also an altar in this field, that might be the place where the story happened. So you guys want to come? Yes. Come look for it? Let's after, go. After Let's after look all, for it. After all that, you think we're going to say no? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can find Holy it. Holy smokes. And with that said, we'll be right back. And welcome back to the land of Israel, God's story. Wow, this is amazing. Well, this is exciting. Where are we going? Where are we right in. Oh, man. Here we are, guys. Watch your step because there's a cliff here. Wow. Let's get positioned. Watch your 
watch your feet. There's a lot of rocks here. Look at this. Let me know when you're stable here, and I'll explain to you what's we're, going we're on. We're good. We're good. Are you good, John? Yep. Watch your step. Watch go your ahead, step. Go ahead. There's a cliff here beyond this stone because several years ago, they wanted to expand the industrial zone, and so they sent bulldozers to just flatten this entire plateau. And it happened to be that a hiker was hiking through the area, and the hiker sees the bulldozers coming up to this rock, and the hiker says, you know, I've hiked past this rock before, and I see it's numbered, and it looks like something very old. Maybe you should check. If it's protected, you might get yourself in trouble if you bulldoze this rock. So they stopped the bulldozers, and they investigated, and they found out that indeed this is registered as a protected archaeological historical site. But that doesn't help if nobody knows about it, nobody visits it, and therefore nobody can keep a law that they don't even know exists. But what's scary is to think about how maybe they've lost some of the great things, not even realize that the great bulldozer will come and just take it away. And you guys, when we got here right now and I saw all the changes that have happened since the last time I was here a few months ago, I was worried that we might get here and it might not be here because I don't think the guys working here have any idea that this is here or what it is. What we're looking at basically is a piece of the bedrock that's sticking out that 3000 years ago, somebody came here and chiseled it out into an altar. Now, it, you can sort of see that it's an altar today, but, uh, Originally, it was completely square with a ledge all the way around with a ramp going up. The researchers have confirmed that by uh, digging around and also analyzing the pieces that have broken off that are scattered around and understanding how they fit together. They've understood more or less what the original shape was. About 100 years ago, there was a researcher who was uh, investigating this area. Can you imagine if this was lost? It's amazing. And he... Uh, it comes across an Arab uh, shepherd from the village of Tsora. And the, the, the villager, the shepherd, says to him, you know that this is Tsora, Sara is Tsora, it's the place of Samson and Manoach, and I want to show you something, come with me. And he takes the researcher to here. The researcher's name was Breslau, Breslau, I have to check it. In Hebrew, it's without vowels, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. The researcher came here with the Arab uh, villager and the villager, the shepherd, comes to the rock and says, look at this. And he tells them in Arabic, da madbacha da manoach, which means this is the altar of Manoach, which means that the Arabs who were living here until 1948 retained an unbroken tradition about this rock that is the, the altar, the Mizbeach in Hebrew of Manoach, where the angel went to heaven in the fire. Samson is an is a extraordinary figure, and this adds a, another aspect to the validity of Samson's, uh, you know, the, the blessing that Samson was at this time in the history of the Jewish people. So uh, it's very moving to see this. One thing, you know, that, that strikes me when I saw this for the first time, if you read secular uh, Bible researchers, often when they talk about the story of Samson, they say, you know, this isn't a historical story. This is a mythology. Like, you know, in Greek mythology, you have Hercules, right? And here you have the Jewish Hercules as Samson, the strong man with the long hair, gets his hair cut and loses his strength. And you can almost, uh, you know, sympathize with that opinion because when you read it, it does sound fantastical. It sounds like something that, you know, someone made up, uh, a fairy tale. But when you come here and you understand that Sorat is an actual place and the altar is an actual altar. And when you continue the story and you go to the other side of the mountain, you look down and you see Timna, where he met his first Philistine wife, is right below the mountain. And Timna, you can see it from the top. And when you're standing there looking down, you can hear the voices of the people down there. It's like an amphitheater. And you can imagine Samson standing on the mountain and hearing the singing and the music of the Philistines and being drawn towards it and going down away from his family and meeting this Philistine girl and the whole continuation of the story that happens with him. When you go there and you walk there and you touch things that they touched and you walk the paths that they walk, you understand it's not a, it's not a fairy tale. I want to touch it. You guys touched it, I want to touch it. <laughs>
<laughs> Pull me up! Pull me up! <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. It's, it's... We're gonna walk out. Walk on out. Thanks, Aaron. This was this was something. Maybe we can call some people and, and see that this is protected. <laughs>